Anyway, so uh, next question. Leo asks, uh, <laughs> Leo asks, are we sure fighters deserve to be paid more? Uh, short answer, yes, except for Jake Shields. She, uh, he deserved to be paid way less. <laughs> yeah, I think fighters should get paid enough that fighting can be their job and they can afford all their expenses and they can live comfortably enough that they can like afford like food and housing and like healthcare because they don't get provided healthcare. So and actually yeah, improve their skills that so that stuff. they don't get yeah, the so rest they can just, all the time. Like, if you fight, I don't know, twice a year, you should be comfortable enough that you're not worried about paying your bills. Um, and you fight like three, four times a year, you should have a lot of extra money um, to do other stuff. And then there should be some sort of contingency where if you get injured, um, maybe they have like a baseline, like make sure you're taken care of. Yeah, like you're not making more than you would if you bought. I don't know, to go like the that. opposite from my usual perspective, because I'm usually the ethics person, from a purely selfish standpoint as a fan, the sport would be much better to watch. It will very drastically improve if everyone was paid paid more because then they'll have the time to, first of all, to account for all these contingencies. And second of all, have the time to actually like find good coaches, find good gyms, travel, uh, and improve their skills. So fights will and just be become a, better. Be a full be a full time fighter. Too. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> there's not that many yes. of those. <laughs> As crazy as it sounds, yeah. there's not many fighters who can actually afford to be a full-time professional fighter. That's, Even that's the most fucked up thing. Most most of the fighters that that do not have like a day job, they're still doing classes in their gym to make yeah. extra money. So it's they still have another job, even if they don't want you to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. I would say I would say a living wage for uh, the UFC should offer for the lower lower level fighters uh, a living wage. Like they just pay you every month, either you fight or not. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting suggestion. That's salary. Yeah. That's salary. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, PFL gave stipends to their fighters uh, when they weren't holding events uh, early COVID, um, but not to all of them. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure how they decided who was getting one or not and how much they were giving. But the PFL ones that is a uh, bank. <laughs> PFL has big startup energy right now where yeah. they just have tons of investor money rolling in and they're spending it on the fighters. It's pretty amazing. Um, PFL, yeah, I was, I was surprised that they're, reasons, but that's their like pay, the pay structure, the pay structure I was so of skeptical. PFL. I was super skeptical. The pay structure of PFL, PFL outside, outside of the tournament money is actually pretty decent. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> so it's, they have like, like, all, it's all that money that they got rolling in. They're actually <laughs> putting it. Can uh, I give an example? Because, um, you know, the UFC has enough money to pay their fighters well. We know this. PFL oh, okay. has enough money to pay their fighters well, and they kind of do. Um, in wrestling, here's an example in America. Uh, you know, this is the only thing I can relate anything to, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Uh, you have the regional training centers or like the wrestling clubs, which are like the professional level of wrestling in America. That's where if you are a senior level athlete and wrestling is your job, you are employed yeah. by a wrestling club or a regional training center. That's who pays your salary. You have endorsements and you have lots of other stuff that makes you money and you coach and you do camps and whatever. But the idea is you should be able to just wrestle and they'll pay you. Well, a lot uh, of these clubs... Uh, well, a, a single question. Uh, those clubs are for freestyle and Greco. Like folk yeah. style is that yeah, after once college, you're out of college... Yeah. You're not professional when you wrestle folk style because it's only for high school and college. So afterward, it's it's freestyle Greco. And this is mostly freestyle. Greco is not well-funded at all. Um, okay. Which is stupid but anyway i mean uh, there's an argument to be made that it shouldn't because greco <laughs> is awful to watch no anyway um <laughs> so the a lot of these clubs have enough money that they could pay a decent amount of wrestlers to be full-time professional wrestlers for their club or for their rtc um basically the only club that actually uses their money that way is Nittany Lion, which is Penn State. Um, they have the most money by far. They get paid more than any other. But also the reason why they can bring more money in is because they have results. And the reason they have results is because they spend the money that they get on the athletes. For example, uh, the Ohio Regional Training Center, like um, like Ohio State, they got a ton of money recently. Uh, not that recently, but a few years ago, they got like millions of dollars. They could have spent on 
salaries for wrestlers. for wrestlers and coaches uh, to keep some people around. Instead, they spent the money on a new facility, like a new athletic facility, because they're thinking, because it's all about like recruiting at the end of the day. That's what drives a lot of these decisions. I mean, that's investing in human capital, basically. That's if so you they invest in human capital, you get the return. The facility on to draw in the new recruits, which will improve everything instead of just keeping the elite talent that you already have on your campus, because the athletes you have at your regional training center, that's illegal recruiting. Um, You're not allowed to tell a recruit, hey, if you come to Penn State, you can train with five Olympians um, because they all train right here on campus. Um, You're not allowed to say that because you have to qualify to be a member of the, the wrestling club or the regional training center to be able to go to those practices. Um, but it's not that hard to qualify. And if you're like a good recruit, you're going to qualify, but they're not allowed to tell you because if you're on the regular college team, you're not supposed to go to those practices. You're not supposed to train with those guys. Um, so it's not, you're not allowed to use that as like bait for recruiting people, but you don't have to f- freaking say that to s- for people to see like, Oh, Kyle Snyder, Thomas Gilman, Helen Marulis, Kyle Dake, David Taylor, all train Nick Wazdowski, they all train here. Um, like, yeah, I think I'm going to go there because it has all the best wrestlers in the country all in the same place. And the, the reason they're there is because the money that comes in for all the boosters for the Nittany Line Wrestling Club goes to them. Um, and that's what brings in all these crazy recruits. Like in wrestling and college wrestling, you every college gets the same amount of money to give to the wrestlers for scholarships. Um, so how is it that one school is hoarding all these top level recruits why are they all agreeing to go here even though they're not gonna get this full scholarship like they would somewhere else it's because they see the opportunity like to invest in their long term become a world champion become an olympic champion not just become an ncaa champion so that's just like what you said they invest in human capital and it's like it's never been about do these organizations have enough money to treat fighters the way that we want them to be treated it's that the business model has always been that the fighters are not the product um so you yeah. just want to invest in the infrastructure of the organization and never actually the fighters which it's it's hard to argue against because we know that the fighting would be better and the fighters would be better and everything would be better in terms of the actual thing you're putting out um but you know people businesses do stuff on purpose like they have market research that probably is reinforcing their decision to not make fighting be better um, we talked about this on our our last podcast. That's definitely paywalled. Uh, but yeah, like it might be actually backed up by their results that they don't need to make f- the fighters better and yeah. they can stiff them this way. Like it's probably. I mean, obviously, there's also the questions the of like how they interpret the data and what sort of data they're getting. But uh, yeah, what they're looking for, yeah, yeah, they're looking for certain results, and those results are reinforced year after year, and so that that hence the decision making. The thing is that. Uh, when it comes to the UFC, especially um, a better quality when it comes to higher level fights doesn't actually mean that the, the product is more profitable. Right. So it's the incentive is not really there because the UFC has already created a culture where um, where there are tons of fighters that we talk about that are, are willing to fight in contender series and then take this like very low end contracts yeah, with, to with, find the with, UFC. with the UFC it's always like you're tu- you're tuning in to watch UFC you're not tuning yeah, in to watch UFC, a, a bunch of fighters you like the UFC already has like two like ex- uh, experiments uh i mean it's like kind of successful experiments with fighters that were like bigger than the organization uh and those were like Ronda Rousey and and Conor McGregor and the Ronda one uh, like worked pretty well for them because Ronda was like a company woman. She took a ton of fights whenever the the company wanted, and and she was earning like good money, but money that was still like peanuts for the UFC. And then we had Connor, and Connor like was like way more popular than the UFC itself. And I'm pretty sure the UFC did not like that. Yeah. Uh, the UFC wants big stars, but they don't they do not want Connor level stars anymore. They don't want to deal with that. It's, they, it's they, uh, they, always they a question of control for them. Yeah. yeah. They're, it's they're bad for the control. The and the control and the control allows them to pay less. So yeah, but so uh, it's tough. I think yeah, the solution is tough. I, I think the reason why Leo is asking this is just the, the sheer amount of pieces of shit <laughs> yeah. in this course. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all about that. But yeah, but but basically, like uh, to give a serious answer to that is, uh, 
Okay, so morality and ethics are two different things. You, you may disagree with the morality uh, exhibited by the fighters in question, but from an ethics standpoint, if you care about like you know issues like uh, everyone having better pay, then you have to uh, unfortunately care about pieces of shit receiving the same amount of pay. That's just kind of how it is. Yeah, I think, I think. Um, I mean, who's who's a piece of shit right now in MMA? <laughs> Every, everyone, everyone, <laughs> obviously. <that. laughs> But yeah, I mean, let's let's say let's say let's say Jake Shields comes back because I'm obsessed with Jake Shields. I'm obsessed. We can, You're about thinking. as obsessed with Jake Shields as Jake Shields is obsessed with, Jake Shields with, Shields with Tate. fucking Greta Thunberg. <laughs> okay, just, she's so, just clamoring to watch it. He just let's wants say, it. Let's say he comes back to fighting. I think just for the fact that he's fighting inside a cage, he should be able to to earn enough money to live. I mean, like, no, let's I, put I will it kill him way. personally, but I don't want him to die from labor abuses. I want to kill him with a gun. Yes. yes. Yep. Let's put it another um, way. So, for example, your <laughs> bin man is racist. The guy, the garbage man is racist. Nah, the, he the, still the, deserves. Uh, yeah, he still deserves to be paid for for picking up your garbage, even though he's a he's he also, a racist. He also deserves to get kicked in the taint, but yeah. those are yes. Two you things. can have both things. <laughs> you can have yeah. both things at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to. Uh, Put, you don't want to punish individuals on a systemic level in a way it's going to affect people yeah, that we don't want exactly. to punish. We need to punish them individually after they've been paid, when they can afford their hospital bills. That way, when they come out, we can do it again. Yes. No, but that, but but at the same time, if one if there's one thing that it's kind of true about what Dana White says is that. Uh, you're not entitled to have a UFC contract. Like, uh, I mean, if the U, but but then I contradicted himself. They're giving like a million chances to Greg Hardy. Uh, I'm okay with not giving Greg Hardy a, a job in the UFC. <laughs> I mean, like, fuck him. <laughs> yes. But once once you have a job there, like, there's nothing else you can do. The the fighters deserve to be paid enough to live. Uh, I think that's the conclusion. All right, uh, but but I'm pro of certain fighters not having a job, like a high profile job, like give it a shitty job. Like if you're if you're a complete piece of shit, like work at McDonald's. I don't know. <laughs> I it's like I, I mean, it, it shouldn't be done. But if it yeah, happened, yeah, if it happens, you you deserve to get paid. <laughs> like you're doing the job after all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, 